when AlexNet solved ImageNet, the days of smart people handwriting algorithms are over. It started to be over then, but now with ChatGPT writing code, it's time for vibe coding. Welcome to this week's episode of Pirate Soldier King. I'm your interviewer, Grace Ann Bennett, and I'm here with... I'm Gregory Roberts. All right. Gregory is the liver of the life and the teller of the story, Pirate Soldier King. And today's episode, we are going to talk about AI. Let's get into bit, it. A little bit of a divergence from our prior topics. What you may not know about Gregory Roberts is that before he went to prison, he was early in on AI. So Gregory, why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of pre-prison AI experience? Sure. Um, <clears throat> around, the, around 2003, uh, I was getting out of my first retirement and uh, had just just exited from a uh, Silicon Valley startup. I had two new children who were three and four years old. And I really wanted to do a legacy company, something that I could really be proud of and not just help the capitalist machine. Two forces happened. I had a, my prior business partner named Scott Wills, who was really tuned into the, some of the entertainment industry. And then the first intern that I ever hired at my first company, Matt Flagg, ended up being a leading edge computer vision scientist. It just so happened that those forces were converging and we started technically what was a computer vision company. Computer vision is the art of teaching computers how to see like humans. So you might have heard of facial recognition. That's, that's basic computer vision, uh, but it extends far beyond that into what's called scene description, where it's essentially you give the computer either a photograph or more likely a, a live video feed and it interprets what's there symbolically. So it'll say, oh, that's three people talking and one of them serving cocktails and there's a dog running in the background and there's two trees, one is a pine tree and one's an oak tree. You know, just things like that, describing a scene so that the computer can understand it symbolically other than just the pixels. Um, so we built an entertainment company on that specifically because we just cared about people. And we pioneered uh, something called markerless motion capture or markerless mocap. Uh, up until then, you might have seen Hollywood movies where they put ping pong balls all over these black suits and they dance around and that's how you capture movement. We were going for the holy grail of interpreting human movement with no markers. So just normal people like you and me walking into the scene and then the, you know, our algorithm is going, oh, there's a hand, there's the elbow. And essentially engineering the entire pose of the person so that we could have gestural computing. And we worked for a long time, many, many years on that. The reason I'm saying all this is that computer vision was essentially the real kickstart, the first practical use of artificial intelligence. And we had AI algorithms that we coded that would run billions of times per second on NVIDIA hardware, exclusively on NVIDIA hardware, even back then in 2004. Wow. Uh, yeah. And so that, you know, kind of introduced me to how this all works and we were even talking about making specialized chips for computer vision and why the GPU was so far superior to the, to the, to the, um, to the CPU. And it turns like that was so far ahead of its time because it turns out Nvidia is now worth at least 10, maybe 20 times what Intel is worth. And Intel makes the brain, Nvidia just makes the, the AI chip. Ah, okay. The AI chip is now more important than, than a normal computer chip. Did you predict, could you have predicted what's going on in AI right now? Back no, then? no, I don't think anyone could have. Uh, so fast forward 10 years and the, the algorithms that we were working on encoding by hand, we, we were doing search algorithms like from someone's core. We'd extend mm -hmm. out, we'd run along the arm and be like, well, there, that's the end of the arm. That must be fingers and, and, think, and, and we'd go up the neck and say, that must be a head. Down the legs, those must be feet. We wrote heuristic search algorithms to determine the structure of the body. 
And that took us so far. It was probably like 80% accurate, which is great for real time. Um, and, and, and suiting our needs is just a recreational video game. And people might have pushed that to like 85% accuracy just using hand-coded algorithms. And I think it was around like 2012 when AlexNet got released. Mm-hmm. And that was a pure AI, huh? AlexNet, never heard of that. Yeah, well, that's, that was the turning point of AI. That's, that's when they solved computer vision, which was called superhuman accuracy. So mm-hmm. you would give people pictures, like we have these CAPTCHAs today, right? Like, where are the cats? Where are the school buses? Where are the bicycles? You know those to prove you're human? Yeah. So people solve those all the time, and they're not perfect. We, we mess up those CAPTCHAs. Like, oh, I missed that bus over there. I missed that bicycle. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So people generally have like a 90% accuracy on those things. AlexNet solved it, I think, with like 96% accuracy. So, hmm. and that was a pure AI algorithm. So there was no human coding there. That was just throwing a, a, a massive net on the images and saying, solve it. And that's kind of the root of like modern LLMs too. They just, you just feed it the data. You say, hey, here's 2 million books and here's all of Reddit and here's transcripts from 100 million hours of YouTube videos. Now figure out what you can. Uh-huh. And, and it does. Uh, so yeah, that was what, 2012? 2017 was then another, and this is uh, right before I went to prison. <laughs> but 2017 was when uh, Google announced the transformer architecture. And that is the foundation of all modern LLMs and all modern chat-based AI. Uh, okay, for the audience, LLM, if they're not a techie. Oh, a large language model. It Got it. Okay. Large language meaning that it ingests more information than you or I could ever even comprehend. Like far more than any library contains and yeah, all the, all the text on the internet, etc. And all the YouTube text because they've done that too. So that, that's what, yeah, that was the, the YouTube text was just in the last year or, or year and a half. Uh, they ran out of internet text. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> and it couldn't get any smarter. So they they put some agents on YouTube, which has I think a hundred million hours of video uploaded an hour or a day, mm-hmm. uh, and they put transcription agents on that. So yeah, they're pulling all the text from all the YouTube videos at this point. I wonder if they're pulling all the TikTok videos now. Um, there's a there's a land grab for data right now because that's the. Current theory is that more data equals a smarter AI. Mm-hmm. We might be hitting a ceiling on that. We're like, okay, we hit like 148 IQ. Now 149 IQ takes 10 times as much data. Uh, it's it's arguable, but that's still one of the operating theories is that the people with the with the best data get the best AI or the most yep. data. Yeah. I mean, one interesting question is once it starts ingesting all the data and then we start using it to create content it will be just eating itself. That's, that, that's called the synthetic data problem. Um, it's being done intentionally, actually, for corner cases. Like there's, there's plenty of domains of knowledge that are very esoteric that the AI, there's not a lot of published or not a lot of internet accessible data on. Mm-hmm. So, so the AI companies, OpenAI, Anthropic, Grok, have basically instructed their best AIs to, to write reports on these, on these thinly populated areas, and then the next AIs are reading the reports that the current AIs are, are writing. It, there, 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 there's a philosophical question of is is this going to be garbage but in, garbage true. out? Huh? Yeah, we're, but we're if we're just ingesting each like we're not. There's no original. What if there's no more original content? Well, there there always is original content because there's life. So like after we after we're done. After the AI companies are done ingesting all the text transcripts of YouTube, what they're doing now is actually watching the YouTube videos. So they're using those computer vision algorithms to, to watch the videos and see that person's laughing when they say that, that person's dancing when they do that, and, and they get the entire contextual understanding of it. The next level, so YouTube is consensually published, right? Like mm-hmm. you have to upload something to YouTube, but there are hundreds of millions of security cameras in the world that are watching almost every major intersection that are watching malls and stores and it and we could just feed the ai that as well and they would basically have 
a billion eyes on the world, which is watching real right. time. Right. And, and, and that's, some of those have microphones also, so they'd be hearing, hearing what people say. And, mm-hmm. and every single one of these is, you know, there's three cameras and two micro or six microphones. Right. But it does seem like the in real life, real time recorded, then at least you know it's, there's something original about it. But some of these other things, you just if it's written, it could just be regurgitating all the written text because you just don't know. I think it's beyond that. I, I think it, 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 it got to where it is today. Let's just call it like a 145 IQ, which is mm-hmm. like 99th percentile, uh, just with written stuff. And now we're going to be feeding it pictures, video, 3D, and just going to consume Everything. all the information it can about the world, and it will just yeah get smarter from that. Okay, so so fast forward. So you, so you're in prison from what year? What year? From what's tw- going effectively from 2017 to 2022, and uh, yeah. So so what happened during that time? So you 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 had no technology back then, or you barely did. Right. Yeah, no, we had a Windows 95 machine with a proprietary secure email client on it. So, yeah. so what, what does someone like you who who writes software and is a techie do in prison while you have no technology? Well, I celebrated for one because after, after <laughs> I got over my uh, detox from it, I uh, was pretty happy just living a physical life and not looking at any screens. Um, and... Uh, my son, I had a conversation with him at the, I think the start of 2022. And he told me, Oh dad, I just went to this art gallery and I always was pushing him to do social things and be out in the world. And I was really excited about Mm -hmm. it. And he started telling me about the art and I got this tingly feeling. I was like, wait, like, is this a, did you go to an actual gallery? He's like, yeah, I went to an actual online gallery. I said, like with people in it or he's like, no, it's on the screen. And I was like, oh, geez, oh. <laughs> like, kid, like, come on. And he's like, you don't understand, Dad. This is the coolest art ever. It's all done by AI. And I, yeah. I, so I'd done the vision side, but I wasn't really familiar other than some Google experiments with what's called generative AI that made mm-hmm. images. But I'd seen stuff like that for 20 years. And I was like, yeah, that kid, I wish you'd just gone to a real gallery with real artists. He's like, you don't understand. This is like real art and it's made by AI and it's amazing. Mm. Well, okay. yeah. So I, I got out of prison and got a cell phone and I was on the phone with another one of my friends and they said something like, it was one of my technical friends and they said, you need to look at Mid Journey. This thing is making AI art and it's next level. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I think that's what my son said. So... Mm-hmm. <laughs> And these two things cross correlated. So right after that call, I downloaded. Uh, it was on Discord at the time. Mm-hmm. So I downloaded Discord and went to Mid Journey and started playing with it. And my brain went. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all just goes to show. If a youngster comes up to you, a smart kid, and gives you a hot tip, don't write him off. Next time, listen. <laughs> it's like, oh my god! Like it's and and at that point, it couldn't do hands. You know, it, it like mess it made people with like six fingers and, and it was fairly abstract, but nonetheless, you could see the seed. It was text to image, uh, mm-hmm. you could, which is now like in Sora, but it, it clearly was going somewhere and it somewhere important. So you, so you get out, I mean, I, I, we, I mean, we can go into this story too, but you did write a computer program on paper. Yeah. 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 That, I, <laughs> Yeah, I, I went down swinging. I, I was very unhappy about not having my computers. <laughs> so, so when I got arrested, I was building VR and uh, virtual reality and augmented reality worlds and the code for them. So I continued that work for the first three months of being in prison and continued to design and, and write code in a highly disciplined manner because generally when you write code, it's a very iterative process. Mm-hmm. You like write one loop and then you test the loop and then you solve the bug and you add something and you just kind of keep adding on to it. Whereas doing it on paper forced you to do like the entire architecture and do it with consideration. And it, and it was really just a fun exercise. As I got sober, free of alcohol, like I felt my brain getting sharper and sharper. Mm. And, and so I remembered all this trigonometry and some uh, geometry. I was, I was writing a celestial calculator. 
I was trying to determine the exact relative position of the sun and the planets and the stars and the moon for any given day and time from any given location on planet Earth. This had relevance because in solitary, we had no clocks, no watches. We never knew what time it was. We only had this tiny sliver of sunlight that would dance and move across our wall over the course of a day. So I was trying to reverse calculate that and by the location of the sun and the angle and the shadow on the wall, figure out what fucking time it was. All those things were coming to me and I was able to, to write the code. Obviously I wasn't able to test it, but you know, I would, I would test it with pen and paper. Uh, it seemed to work. I haven't, I haven't put it into the machine yet. <laughs> <laughs> you should bring it back and then AI will help you perfect it. Um, okay, so, you, so fast forward, you get out of prison and then all of a sudden there's a lot that's been going on with AI. Uh, and so what's your first impression when you, you think, okay, what's going on with AI? And when you well, got out, like what? Well, maybe we should, we should take that for the next episode. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we can wrap it up there. We can figure out what you, I mean, we'll, we'll give them a little precursor. All right. One, one thing is you always wanted to um, meet an alien, right? So tell us about that. Okay. Well, here, the basic, okay, I will, I'll do a little lead in on that one. Lead in because we're going to oh. meet the alien. So before right? chat GPT, which was November, uh -huh. 2022, you could go on to it with a command line, which is like a really non user friendly, but a hacker interface. And it was a GPT two was what it was. So I went into GPT two and had some conversations with it because chat GPT didn't exist. And it, I, felt strongly that there was like a presence there. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't want to get woo, woo or anything. It's just, there's constantly this debate of whether AI is alive, whether it's sentient, whether it has agency and independent thought. And I felt pretty profoundly at the time. And I, and I felt able to make the judgment because I'd worked with AI for 20 years that this thing is different. It's not, like everything we'd done prior was a logical computer program where you put A plus B equals C and a million times it was A plus B equals C. And this thing, it was like A plus B sometimes is C plus two, sometimes it's C 10 million, sometimes it's B, some, you know, just, and it wasn't random either. It was like a human would be. Like if I asked you the same question 10 times, you're going to give me slightly different answers and certainly you're going to have different verbal nuance in it. Well, that, when you told me that about AI, that just treat it like an employee or a person or a human yeah. and then give them instruction, that improved the way I deal with AI because it does come back different every time and there's, it's just, yeah, it seems much more human. Okay, so we'll get into the humanness of AI or the alienness of AI and how it might change the world and your predictions for the next 50 years, we'll get into that next episode. So stay tuned and we'll come back with a little bit more on AI and Gregory Roberts predictions for the future. Thank you, Grace Ann. All right. See you next time on Pirate Soldier King. Dot com. <laughs>